Hey guys, Rorius here. Welcome back to Ace Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. In the previous episode, we found our chief dead, and uh, we find found her sister hovering over her body. I'm gonna try my best to remember all of the name, the the voices. Sorry, uh, that I gave all the characters. I do apologize if they're if they're a little different. <laughs> I did just episode. I did just edit the previous episode last night, so hopefully I'll be able to remember them. We just said that we'd present, sorry, we'd represent uh, Maya in court, so I'm assuming... If I present... Oh, my bad, I pressed the wrong button, I think. Uh, present. <laughs> hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? That's not the voice I gave her. <laughs> I'm gonna do my usual. Can I listen to my sister's voice? Maya's eyes closed. She listens to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears begin to roll down her cheeks. Thank you. Aww. She was so happy for a moment there. The only thing that we haven't, like, seen officially is- Oh! Is- is what was in the drawer. Good evening, sir. Excuse me, you are... I beg your pardon, sir. I'm the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Uh, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, oh, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy! Yeah. Wait, wait, no, hey! Why does it seem like every time I come here I end up embarrassing myself? <laughs> wait, did I miss- did he say like- Did he say like, you too? <laughs> I, I missed what I- what he said. I was so busy reading and I didn't like take it in. Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, I almost forgot. Ah! <laughs> you, you came back quick! I might ask you when- you to inform Miss May that there's a message for her. Please tell her Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp. We just learned that Mr. White is a name that uh, is, is, is related to the case that Mia was working on. Mr. White of Blue Corp. Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. That's a that's a tongue twister of a sentence. Mia and Maya's mother. <laughs> could it be could it be a coincidence? Okay, immediately. There's the screwdriver sticking out of the out of that half open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? Ah, <laughs> wiretap. A wiretap. Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with that thing? With a thing like this? Wiretap, add it to the court record. There is definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind this all. I know it. Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, bellboy! Still there? Uh-oh, time to scram. I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. To be continued. <laughs> I see. So did I end, like, at the right at the end of a chapter section? I ended right at the end of a chapter section. <laughs> That's exactly what Digits was warning me about this. <laughs> September 7, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Me and Edgeworth. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. Uh oh. What voice do I want to give Edgeworth? I'm gonna give him like a breathy voice. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on uh, on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. 
The defendant, this Maya Faye, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> he barely fits at that podium. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. It was he was like a detective, see? Sir? My name's Dick Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me let me use this floor map of the office to explain. To explain. <laughs> the body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. <laughs> I see, I see. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. <laughs> hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. It's not hard evidence at all. It's entirely, um, what's a uh, circumstantial. But this game, in this in this world that this game takes place in, circumstantial evidence is used all the time. <laughs> as soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already: the defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Smack! <laughs> oh, hey, Maya just threw me something- threw something at me. <laughs> oh, what's this? So <laughs> he had a piece of paper hit him. When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It works. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Okay. <sighs> Alright, uh... I think that's... that's fine. There are two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Maya Fay. Uh, we had a witness. Oh, the di no, there was that thing about the distance. It was like, you couldn't make out faces. Um, press. Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? <laughs> you did just say it. You said it. <laughs> exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim as hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious. And she sure isn't pink, pal. <laughs> well, I guess she is pink. <laughs> Fixating on that detail of all of them. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, I guess pressing can have, it, have its advantages. Yes. Gah. <laughs> Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear that testimony again. Hard evidence. <laughs> I 
After securing the subject, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written in a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. I mean, that once again, that doesn't prove anything. <laughs> hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a quick question for you, Detective. Your Honor. That was not quite right. Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I know, I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Okay. Okay, examine the scene. Found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. My written in blood. Um. Uh. Before she died. This is where you, like, I'm going to just straight up present. Because this, the autopsy report says that it was. Death was instantaneous. Present. Objection! <laughs> Objection! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Maya Fey, or Mia Fey, wrote uh, in her own blood that she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey. That's really what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those lawyery tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? <laughs> you have it backwards, Detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, Detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. <laughs> I was holding onto that information, I didn't- As soon as I saw that piece come up, I was like... <laughs> I'm like, I know this is gonna be a thing. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, Detective. Order, order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but what exact? when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? when? It was the day after the murder? A day after- the day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. I remember this. Because that's apparently a meme, is, is um, Edgeworth freaking updating the autopsy report mid-court session. <laughs> that's BS. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. <laughs> no way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. <laughs> that is all. I see! Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham, Edgeworth. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. I can, I can save, apparently. Like, at moments like these where I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna go right. <laughs> You're a sham, Edgeworth. <gasps> Mr. Edgeworth, I heard there's nothing you wouldn't- you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly had- have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. <laughs> no matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. And from blow from a blunt object, may have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Done. This isn't good. The prosecution would like to call the, its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with mur, saw the murder <laughs> saw the murder with her own eyes. <laughs> Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. 
Exactly. What part of her is in? What part of her is innocent? <laughs> I kind of hate her. <laughs> I kind of hate her. Uh, witness, witness your name, please. April May, at your service. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, the game- that's, that was a funny thing on the game grunts. Dan kept saying wink out loud, as if she's saying wink, and it's not just like that she winks. <laughs> I don't know why that tickles me. Order! An intrusion should not require- an introduction should not require any re reaction from the crowd! The witness will refrain from wanton winking. <laughs> Aww, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, we, where were you on the night of September 5th, when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like, in my hotel room, tee -hee. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fane co -op Law Offices. Hmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witnesses account. Alright, it was like... It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy wink. <laughs> Ugh. Hmm. Well, Your Honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Wait, wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand where you- uh, you were Miss Mia- Miss Mia Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. That's the- that's the point though, that's what the fuck? Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, <laughs> of course I am. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. Only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay. It was like nine at night. Okay, wait, uh, immediately I'm going to check. Oh, it didn't. It doesn't say when she was killed. Uh, nine at night is right. That would have been about when she died. Oh, floor plans, I can check the floor plans. Ah, okay, wait, wait. It's- it's something to do with the floor plans. Wait, look out the window, you know. Then, ooh, I saw a woman with long black hair being attacked. The second here was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. That girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Wait. That really jumps out of this conviction. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Where should I press her? Once again, I'm gonna save it. I think the previous part went right. So I'm gonna save over that. Press. The woman with the long hair. That was Mia Fey? Uh huh. Slender, sort of, well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? Attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in a defense chair. <laughs> How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one other- one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's, I question the testimony. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. <laughs> what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Uh, you're lying. You saw nothing. Uh, you're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <laughs> fucking when her eyes go like that, she's so scary. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning? 
Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this. About this, I mean. <laughs> okay, if you really, if you had really witnessed my client, my, my F.A., you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so true. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Roar! What are you trying to say? You mean lawyer? I saw what I saw! I just didn't think all the terrifying little detail or trifling little details were necessary. Darling. <laughs> Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing from your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Wink. <laughs> your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Okay. Let's hear it. I did see everything. I did see everything, I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock. I'm um, kind of statuey clock. The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you, do he? Um. I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. No, it, yeah, it's, it's something to do with her. She said that she goes off to the right. She doesn't go off to the right, does she? Um, woman dodged, but first attack ran off to the right. Yeah. Is that right, as in your right, as you looked from her the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right, it was my right hand. Right. Satisfied, Mr. Wright. Please continue. Um. I'll press this as well. A clock. Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something new. I'm on something there. Okay, let's go back. I'm just gonna check this again. Yeah, I'm gonna present this. This evidence clearly reveals a contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that, are that evidence? How exactly are that evidence and the statement just now rela related? They, they aren't, are they? Oh, <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> okay, okay. I think that won't be any points with the ju judge. Ooh. I thought the whole point was that the like lamp had been knocked over. Maybe that's the next point. <laughs> that's the problem. I should. I, it would be better if I knew nothing about the case because I think I'd be making more logical statements. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. I guess the fact that it's a clock wouldn't be apparent. I'm gonna present this. Yeah. Oh, okay. This sounds like it's the right one. I was told by digits that if the music stops, then you've got it right. <laughs> you got the thing right, Miss May. What you just said now is quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that this was the statue of the thinker was a clock. That the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Uh, <laughs> another person in, in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I figured it out. <laughs> order, order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Uh. <laughs> the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all the, that's important here. It's not. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw, will, you will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. No, I will not. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> but questions are, are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I ca I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. <laughs> what the fuck? Objection sustained. You may question. continue to question the witness. Oh, If he stopped me there, the trial will be over. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... 
because I heard it. Yes, I heard the, say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Faye and Co? No. Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Tee hee. The law offices of the law offices of Faye and Co, where the murder where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. You could have easily heard the clock, but. <laughs> mm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, Your Honor. I'm not satisfied because uh, it couldn't have rung. <laughs> Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. Because <laughs> of the phone call. <laughs> like... Mia had said she'd like gutted it and put papers inside it. Oh, could you possibly? Just take a look right now. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. <laughs> I love this game. This game's so good. <laughs> Mr. Wright. I love the courtroom stuff though. That's my absolute favorite. Would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness, this witness is a big fat liar. Fat, <laughs> she says. Well, Miss May. <laughs> He's gonna be like, quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clock re removed? But I have evidence! <laughs> if it was after the witness heard the clock, then there's no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly ha what happened, Your Honor. It's not. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clock was removed? Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, impossible, of course. I have proof. <laughs> what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof like you so mu you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is this. Take, that! <laughs> Take a look at this. Mm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, you could have a you have a girly phone. Wait, no wait, this is this isn't my phone. Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. <laughs> order, order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. <laughs> this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Mm. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. <laughs> Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you, if you could. Ah, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not talking, that's lame. I had to take the, the clock work out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27am. The morning of the murder. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at the ho at her hotel. Ha! Ma! 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 <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain to this to the court? Just how did you know that this weapon was a clock? Well... Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I got... I got to so many. Oops, I forgot. Wink. <laughs> so the wit so the witness has seen it before. What would that would make sense? Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes. <laughs> it's it's a handmade clock. The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Is is there a piece other than this? It just says made by Larry Bart, so I'm gonna just present the clock itself. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> oh, excuse is not on sale today. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> the 
the heart on her chest spun. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> She's scary now. What is it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! I shouldn't speak that loud. It's probably blowing out my microphone. <laughs> Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 silly me. Gr grunt. <laughs> did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? <laughs> Just like staring angrily at me. Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... Uh... You held it? You'd heard about it. You'd heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hands. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There was no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me the evidence proving the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Ah, uh, the, the wiretap. Yep. <laughs> have a look at this. Ah! Oh, that! <laughs> I found this! I found this in Miss May's room! <laughs> Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is! Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Maya Faye's, Mia Faye's phone, were you not? Oh! <laughs> Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Yes! <laughs> can you can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on oh, the proof that the victim said on the phone the weapon is a clock. It's right there on the fucking phone recording. Oh whoops. <laughs> Why? I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we're seeing that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Uh, Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, the, well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to me for. Uh, hold on for me. Again? What is this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like a, that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. <laughs> it's Miss April May. You used a wiretap to listen to this conversation, and that's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... <laughs> Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does, that, does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. La, la, la. <laughs> witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss Murray! Shut up, all of you! I give you the right to talk to me like that! You, you lawyer! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's no fair. All of you gang up on me like that. Oh, I'm so, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? Uh... <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna pretend to cry. <laughs> that did it. The court's seen this. The real Miss April May, May now. Now to deal the final blow. I'm gonna save over this, because I feel like I've done pretty well. Um... She- I know she didn't do it, so... But... You did it, you wire- I'm- I'm- I'm thinking that this would be like, you- You did it, you wiretapped your phone, but I- I feel like it might lead down the path of like, you killed her. No, why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't Tiffany tapping, uh, irrelevant? Gosh, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. <laughs> well, this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice. He has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? 
Ha! <laughs> I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought of that. And of course, I can and I will. You can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way! Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the killing happened around nine at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee? You know, like normal coffee, but cold. And you don't drink it quick, the ice m And if you don't drink it quick, the ice melts. And then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Wink. Okay, the witness was not at the scene of the, of, not at the scene at the time of the murder. So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's cell, uh, telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. The testimony stands. You saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No, they're gonna they're gonna let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, um, well, uh, to be examining Miss May. Uh, I have I have a piece of evidence in my mind, but I don't know what. Uh. I'm gonna save it again. I think I did that well. Ah! Uh... Did you examine Miss May? Right. On with the cross examination. What exactly do you have left to examine, Mr. Wright? Miss April May has admitted to the wiretap, yes. But that bears no relevance to the case at hand. Murder. There's no way you can prove any contradiction. Uh oh. Think. This can't be the end, but I'm out of evidence. And I believe the cross-examination is over. Mr. Edgeworth, does this prosecution have any other witness to call? None, Your Honor. She's the last. What? But that means... Maya's guilty. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The defense would like to call the bellboy after all. <laughs> As I thought. Hmm. May I remind you, dear Mr. Wright, should you question the bellboy and Miss April May's alibi prove to be solid, then by default your client Miss Maya Fay will be pronounced guilty. Are you prepared to accept my condition? Edgeworth. He's got me backed into a corner. But I don't see any other way to, ma to take this. I accept. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I think... I think I'm gonna leave this episode here. I'm gonna try and make these episodes, like, not too long, you know, keep them relatively decent length. Um, so I'm gonna leave that there, and we'll find out what the bellboy has to say about the murder in the next episode. <laughs> I think this is still a little bit more to go with this one, because uh, I think, pretty sure the whole the whole point of this episode, this chapter, if you will, is we're just kind of proving Miss Maya Faye innocent, or not guilty. Um, the the murderer doesn't get found just in this in this chapter. So, yeah, we're we're this is the endeavor to save Maya, <laughs> and we'll hopefully do that either in the next episode or the one after that. Uh, but until then, if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and until the next episode of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney.